Hi beauties and curls, welcome back for another video. Before we get into this video, I would love to ask you the question of the day, and that is what ingredient in hair, your hair care products does your hair absolutely love, and which one does your hair absolutely hate? I know, I didn't use grammatical, uh, you know, I have some grammatical errors in there, yes. But the whole point is, I would love for you to subscribe, okay? So don't forget to smash the button down below, and let's get into the video. All right. So in today's video, we're talking about glycerin being the devil and how I figured out that glycerin was the devil for my hair. And this really allowed me to curate a lot of products. It helped me save a lot of money. And yeah, if you're interested, then keep watching. So first of all, let me tell you what glycerin is and then we can go into further and deep dive into the video. Glycerin is a humectant. And basically what a humectant is, is that it brings moisture to your hair. So when you apply a humectant to your hair, it's going to attract moisture. That is glycerin. And they, there are other humectants. And let me know if that's a video that you guys wanna see because we can talk about ingredients. I am an ingredients prone person when it comes to products. The first thing I'm gonna do is turn over the bottle and I'm gonna look at ingredients. Why? Because it's gonna tell me a lot of how the product is going to react to my hair. I have high porosity, like low, I would say medium density. I would say, I used to say low density, but I have very fine strands, but I just have a lot of them. It, that's why it seems like a lot of people think I have a lot of hair. It's just that um, the dense density in my hair, it's medium, it's not too thin but I do have fine thin hair, but it is high porosity, which means that it is very porous. The hair strands has holes in them, and basically what my hair is trying to do is a lot of times moisture will escape from out of those holes, and it is my responsibility. That's why the lock method works really well for me. It does work well for a lot of other high porosity people. Let me know what method you use because other people you know people do use the lco method and that means liquid cream oil or the lock method is what i use that is loc and that means liquid oil cream so the way that i apply products is i apply water first then i seal with an oil and then i kind of sandwich it with a cream that's kind of like what i do so it's water and then i do oil and then i do my leave-in that's how i actually apply product just to let you know that glycerin is a humectant and because I have high porosity hair, some people love some people's hair love glycerin. I mean, they love the attraction. But the way that a humectant reacts to your hair is not just the product itself. You also have to take into consideration the weather. Here in California, the weather is very, very dry. It's a desert climate, which means that the air on the outside is gonna be very, very dry. And so when I put a humectant in my hair and it's trying to attract all the moisture it can, what it's attracting is dryness from the environment to my hair. Basically, that's what glycerin is doing. So that's kind of like how I, when I found out that glycerin was the devil for my hair, I started looking for products without it, which means that they're glycerin free. So when you hear me talk about glycerin free stylists, glycerin free leave-ins, glycerin free gels, you know, those are the things that I really look for. My hair really thrives. A lot of people are like, how do I get my hair just long lasting? How does it look moisturized and juicy? When I exclude or when a product has, does not have glycerin, that's when my hair really thrives. Now there has been some exceptions to the rule, just like the TGIN Define and Twist Cream. That does not contain glycerin, but it's horrible for my hair. My hair hates it, but it, it's some, it may be something else in there. Like Panthenol is another humectant. I think I'm really gonna come with some famous or some popular humectants. If you guys don't like glycerin, these are some maybe some humectants that you can avoid. If your hair loves glycerin, then you, or vegetable glycerin, that's what you'll see in ingredients a lot. That's what you want your products to have in it just as long as you know what ingredients do then it will really help your hair let's talk about the backstory of how i found out that glycerin was the devil 
okay? I did a couple of years ago a twist out, like Battle of the Braid Out and Battle of the Twist Out, I believe. And I used different stylers. I kept my leave-in the same. And that's really important when you are trying to find out products. You want to keep to the ones that you love, your hair loves, and test one at a time because you don't know what's reacting if you keep changing things. So for instance, back in the day, my hair loved the Kinky Curly Not Today. I believe it still loves it, but I found other leave-ins, but that was a leave-in that my hair absolutely loved. So if I wanted to see how a styler reacted to my hair, I would always use Kinky Curly Not Today and I would change the styler. Now, when I would use a styler I would use it a couple of times I still do this in my reviews I will use a product a couple of different times with a couple of different leave-ins if I want to see if that styler is going to be comparable to me because I don't want to change my whole routine if the styler is not good so I already wanted to work with things that I already love like my leave-ins are my base that's what I say stylers are what keeps the hair defined and keeps the hold in the hair. So my leave-in is what locks in the moisture. A1, what's important to me is moisture. Let me know down in the comments what is important to you. I would love to know that. But the way that I found out is that I noticed that one of the one of the symptoms that glycerin is not really good for your hair is that you get crazy frizz and my hair would be so frizzy it would tangle up so fast and it would dry out those are some of the symptoms if glycerin glycerin with products that have moisture in it or it attracts moisture those are one of the things a lot of times your hair may like that but my hair hates it so or I don't like the look that it gives and I've shown in a couple of videos how my hair looks uh, check out the diva curl video that I did a couple of years back I'll link it over here just so you guys see how my hair looks like when it is not in its best state and how glycerin reacts to it now the product that I have this is so old but because I still see curl definition I do have some frizz in here but I did not use, I used a glycerin free gel and I also used a glycerin free leave in. That's where I get my optimal results with my hair. And so I was doing this battle of the braid out and I noticed every time I changed the styler, like I, the first week, my hair, and I was actually tracking the progress, my hair was extremely frizzy with like four or five of the stylers and then some of the other ones I did also I also tracked how long it how long my hair lasted so I noticed with the products um, as I was comparing them I was like wait a minute my hair is really really frizzy today and so when I tracked that the first time the next style that I went to I was like okay oh my hair acted really well with this what's up with that then the next product, I think it went frizzy again. So I, what I did was I took the first styler and the third slide styler that I use because I was doing weeks. I used, I compared those, I turned them over and I looked for ingredients that were similar. That's how I found out that glycerin was the devil. So what I started trying to do was um, by a rule of thumb, I would reduce, I would look at the concentration level of glycerin in the product. So if glycerin was in the top five, I noticed that it got uh, it got frizzy really, really quickly. And then when there was no glycerin at all, my hair was really spirally. It was very juicy. The moisture stayed there. And so, yeah. Now, there are some exceptions to the rule because I do sometimes have glycerin in a product. It needs to be very, very low on the list. But another thing I do is I don't put glycerin with glycerin, meaning that my leave-in is not going to... My leave-in and my styler can't have glycerin in it. And usually what I try to do is if the leave-in has glycerin, then what I seal with the styler that I'm putting on does not have glycerin or vice versa. And I have found out that it works okay. I hope that helped you guys out. I know that there was a question in one of my earlier videos and they were like, why do you say glycerin is the devil? How do you know that? And so I wanted to address that because I think that that's a very 
frequently asked question on my channel and a lot of you all have told me that glycerin is the devil or your hair too or you your hair doesn't like glycerin so i just wanted to come and explain that i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up please subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye guys